Welcome back, Zero K fans. Sorry about that. It's well, long intermission because we're waiting for Mars, Sino, and Iken's killer to end, which is actually kind of a defeat from the Jaws of Victory game in the last last little bit. Iken's killer did not expand properly when Mars and Sino were contained and then lost. So now we have Skazi Ophelius versus Mars Sino semifinals match on Altair Crossing. So we saw this map before. With Anarchid and Yurga versus Auto War and Parzival. Oh, sorry, no, not them. Sorry, against Rymark and Norm. That's what it was. Rymark and Norm. Auto War and Parzival didn't even get on this map. No. Rymark and Norm versus Anarchid and Yurga. And they did a pretty impressive job, too. I mean, both sides, very <coughs> even match. Rymark really showed off how well they could play jump bots. But now we have Sino going for Shield Bot Center, which is much more what I expect. Most of what we're going to do, and Skazi Ophelias have not shown anything they're doing yet. I don't see anything the, that the players have really done. <coughs> they're discussing their strategies on uh, TeamSpeak. Yeah, or so Bumble. we have no idea what it is they're planning on doing. We shall see eventually. Looks like Sino... Ah, uh, Mosh timed out. Oh, what? <laughs> Whatever, they can rejoin. Anyway, <clears throat> Sino apparently not really going to go for Reclaim. Going to go for early power plants as well. We saw that happen last time for Rymark and Norman. That didn't work out as well as... Well, it worked out poorly, as one would expect. <coughs> well, on the other hand, Skazi actually doing kind of the same thing. Interestingly enough, going for Kulgi by fact at the center of the map. So Kulgi and... Kulgi versus Shield at the center. Northeast corner, we have Moj, who has not chosen their factory yet, and Orphelius has not shown where they're planning to start yet. Probably south or north. There's no reason to start center along with Skazi, and there's no real reason to start in the real corners. Orphelius starting in the north. Okay. And light vehicles. Yeah. Scorcher spam all the way. Yeah, it's not as unusual as heavy tanks was, that's for sure. And jump out factory is... Up for most, so jump on shield, but this is where shield's in the center and jump us on the side. However, this is basically just the south is open. No player is trying to claim the south. The north side is much more closed. I mean, it's symmetric both north and south, but there is a lot of resources in the center, especially when you consider all this reclaim that's going on. I mean, this just in the south alone, there's how much reclaim is there? <coughs> there is about a thousand metal. Thousand yeah. of the fourteen hundred metal in the south alone by rocks, without considering the metal spots, without considering the actual, the regular income. That is a lot of metal con to consider. Yeah, but it's spread out. It's not a given. It isn't as big as you make it sound. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's not. It's not the biggest deal in the world. It's just that it's. If someone can get that south and really secure it, that's gonna that is gonna be the thing that the players have that's gonna be more contested. But we the do north, see more uh, constructors now. I see four scorches is evil. Can take out the commander in seconds. Yeah, Orphelius is going straight for actually I think they go for the comm dive, they're going for the pyro dive. And Yeah, he'll get Yeah, they're them. going for the comm dive, and that is not gonna be successful. That's just gonna be two forced pyros away. for two scorches is a good trade. That is a good trade. Not going to allow for a calm kill. But then again, Scorchers are coming in to help out. And Skazi coming in with Glaives for additional reinforcements. Those, but all Orphelius those doesn't care. Yes. Orphelius does not care. Moving straight into the main base. And this Lotus is in a terrible position. Apparently relying entirely on Pyros to use for defense. And that's actually going to work decently well. So that wasn't a bad thing. All things considered, this is actually working okay for Moj. Yeah, it could have been worse if they would have jumped on the laser turret, maybe. Yeah, that that's actually working out fine. Motion Sino are defending, no problem. Now, Skazi is expanding pretty quickly to the southwest. Yeah, Sino, Sino is getting the income now from the reclaims. He has two constructors in the center. Skazi has the tick. He is anticipating a big counterattack with raiders, which is very nice by him to anticipate it beforehand. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Unfortunately, not anticipating the correct direction, or at least not. No, it's okay. Oh no, never mind. They are. They have enough ticks. Yep. They have enough ticks to cover any likely direction. Moish uh, goes into defender mode. 
and this is the time where Orphelius wants to move to the center and just attack with everything they have together because there's yes, so many defenders. In That's a useful thing. Yeah, this is a nice game. Orphelius. Ah, a one shot defender kill commander. Yeah. Wow, nice. Rocket launcher on Battlecom is. It's kind of scary. It's nice. It's kind of rare though. Oh, yeah. look at that tick. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, wow. That was a nice tick it's shot. A work of beauty, Skazi. That does mean Skazi's commander will live to fight another day. Getting rid of all these bandits as well. Because that was a calm snipe set of bandits there. I micro. Yep. Micro with just a little bit of effort, those bandits would have destroyed Skazi's commander. Okay, leveler. No expansion whatsoever from Orphelis. He uh, puts everything he has into units and his commander. Uh huh. And he leaves the expanding to Skazi. And Skazi is expanding pretty strongly, actually. They're the only one taking the south right now. Sino has he not taken the south this, uh, at all. The two closest, and he uh, went for the upper uh, or the lower yeah, upper the maxes. Plus one max, too. I suppose the two plus 2.2 .2 ones. I don't, I don't get that. Why would you go for the plus one? That's nothing. I mean, it's. Skazi wants to move to level two with his commander. Yeah, well, they're about to do that, but it's still an odd max choice. I mean, like I said, they are getting south. They are taking that, although not as well as they could be. But still, I also like this it. push by uh, Orphelius with the leveler and the slasher. Yeah, the north side is being taken by Orphelius pretty well. skazi has got the south side on lock. There's really not a whole lot of the motions, you know, have available to them that's in a good position. That just isn't. That everything around Skazi and Orphelius have just been taking when it's been open. I don't know worrying about They it haven't really that. taken it. They have units. They don't have... Well, in the north they've taken They're not taking strongly. the reclaim yet. They're not taking the maxes yet. That's what needs to happen in a couple minutes. Yes. In the next couple minutes. Well... The south side, Skazi is taking the mexes. The north side, Orphelius has the defense set up. No mex is planned yet. But they do have the nice the defenses they need. That's, that's it's an interesting good. commander that Skazi is using. <coughs> He's going to try it again with a uh, swarm of raiders. Light particle beam. Oh boy, there we oh, go. Yeah, strike, you don't see that very much. Not a bad tick, but. It's okay, it's perfect. Good. Three units for one tick. That's what they're for. Oh, yeah, they're bandits. Yeah, that makes God. Oh, okay, they got right. scuttled. The commander, it's something you can expect. <laughs> ah, I missed that. Darn it. Yeah, and that's a little Orphelis bit too, uh, <laughs> too cocky. <laughs> Orphelius' commander down right there. So Orphelius actually does now lose that north somewhat. Loses a lot of control over the north that they had before. And on this map, the income from the commander is quite important. Indeed it is. Orphelius actually did lose a third of their income as a result of that destruction. This is a big setback. That, I think, might give... Mo well, it's giving Mojanzino a lot of room to maneuver. I mean, Skazi still has the bottom, but Mojanzino have... They have a military advantage that can very easily turn this around. And Ophelia's trying to do what they can with the levelers, but levelers against pyros, the pyros kind of win. The levelers can't do... They can do a decent amount of damage, but it's... I, it's not the it's same I as think. raiders. Mm. They don't, they don't one-shot the pyros. Or anywhere near. No, but they can get a couple shots off and they have a good splash. That's true, and they're very accurate, so the jump doesn't really phase them. Exactly, and also there's a sl uh, slasher and defender to fall back to. That's, that's the point. But commanders like this, you should avoid. <laughs> yeah, the, the beam commanders do not want. Get away from them. However, Skazi and Orphelius are still in a fairly solid position. They still have a strong... Skazi in particular has a very strong army. Pretty well set up. It's hard to penetrate what they have. Not impossible by any stretch, but it is hard. It's intimidating. Yeah, they do have the South Hill. Uh, in the, uh, But lost the commander, so yeah. Kind of evens out. It does. And... What the heck? This was reclaimed and then... Rebuilt. Oddly enough, Orphelius, Orphelius's forces have been pretty much completely stemmed because they were trying to pull their factor. I guess they're trying uh, to morph, maybe? Uh, I don't know. But they had reclaimed partially their factory. Well, maybe you wanted to morph? Uh, That's I don't what know. I'm thinking. It's the only thing that comes to mind, but frankly, I don't see the point of ever doing that, honestly. I think Skazi, it was a misclick. <laughs> maybe. Skazi going for more rock reclaim. Good to see that. 
Skazi is definitely very strong, but Moj and Xenor are both equally strong. Skazi is kind of carrying the team right now for Skazi and Orphelius. Like Moj and Xenor, yeah. they can't easily push in in any direction, whereas <coughs> Orphelius and Skazi, like they can kind of push in the north because Orphelius is a bit weaker, but Skazi's commander is right there. Oh, look at that scuttle. Oh, it would with be that. bad luck if you would it would if it would run run into that uh, glaive. Yeah. I also would like to see a couple more hammers. Just... Really good luck if it runs into that. Oh, commander. but that's exactly what Skazi is doing. Skazi is good. <laughs> oh yeah, if that if that scuttle runs into the commander, it runs into Skazi's commander. That's gonna kill it in one go. <laughs> yeah. And that's level three with two particle beams. Wow. Yeah, that is one of those super skirmishers. You're not gonna directly hit that. You're not gonna get that head on. It's got a scuttle is a good put. That's a good bet. But that's about all you have. Hmm. I think the only thing Pyros. I got... hmm? I, I see Pyros. It could work. I do see Pyros, but Moe's is not building anything. Sino's still building a thug law ball. Going pretty strong for that. Do they have felons? They do not have felons in queue. They just have Thug Law with some rogues coming in afterwards. And some rogues yeah, already rogue. in play. This is good old old school uh, 0k with yeah. uh, vehicles and shield bots. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with this setup. Although the levelers are going to make it a little bit trickier, but these the rogues are doing a fine job countering the levelers, getting in their way. So overall, it is going to come down more to micro than anything. In terms of type choice, Moj, I'm sorry, Sino and Orphelius have both made pretty good choices. So it's just who uses them best. And it looks like right now Seno has the advantage based on the terrain. They're in a much better position. Able to attack, able to go over the hill. Yeah, they're gonna have a hard time losing on this right now. <laughs> Scuttle versus Tick. Who wins? Nobody! <laughs> well, I guess the Tick wins because the Scuttle is a lot more expensive. <laughs> Boom! There we go. Oh. Yeah, there they go. That's that's gonna be hard to kill though. Those lovers can't really get a <laughs> shot in. Yeah. But the glaives can though. Actually, the glaives gonna have a chance. The glaives, the glaives do exactly that. Get rid of one rogue, two rogues. Skaz is going to level Thug four. Does go Thug does not go down, and that scuttle is not in position at all. Which kind of sucks. is being ignored completely. <laughs> well, I don't think that I don't think Sino know. Oh, sorry, I don't think Moj knows where. Art's where Skazi's commander is. No, he doesn't. If they did, then that would be perfect, but they don't. Skazi's commander is just over to the north, but I don't think Sanon... If Moj knows that, they'd deal with it. But oh, Scuttle is instead going down to get rid of the hammers. Totally not worth it. Well, Scuttle is going forward to die. <laughs> yeah, to kill two uh, solar couple, collectors. That's yeah, good. what that... <laughs> That's, no, that's a waste. That's, I don't even. The commander's safe, that's for sure. And the commander's actually 6,800 HP, so there's still one scuttle away from death. If that scuttle is ever built. Yeah, I don't see anything being built at all. There's a firewalker. That's that's okay for breaking the north somewhat. But yeah, at this point, Skazi and Orphelius have just had the economic advantage. They've had the north and south. Not necessarily the center quite as strongly, but they still even have the center, kind of. They still have some of the metal strategies. They're still taking what they can, taking the reclaim. Sino is pushing forward nicely. Yeah, Sino has the forces to do so. Moj! And they have the Firewalker. They have... They've had some Pyros from time to time. But yeah, Sino is definitely the one that has the built-up force. And their force is not really vulnerable to sharpshooters. That's the nice thing about not having the felons included, is that the sharpshooter doesn't have a great target to work from. I mean, as a firewalker. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, there's no <coughs> single target that's going to just kill the ball. Which is probably why Sano did not go for a felon ball, he just went for Thug Law with rogue support. <laughs> so many ticks. Oh, yeah, wow. Four ticks all along here. There's a tick here, tick here, tick here. There's a tick down here, and that actually doesn't do much. It's a couple bandits, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. Oh, Another tick goes off for go? nothing. Hmm. Was that? That was moved, wasn't it? That wasn't just revealed. That was moved by Skazi, I think. There's a counter tech in the north. Yeah. Well, that's not really working out. Skazi's commander is not really doing much. It's a big investment. 
Yeah, why is it going in the back? It's retreating. That That is an assault commander. I do not know why that is retreating. That makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, scuttles. Well, okay, makes some sense then. I'll grant that. Scuttles are being very nice psychologically. Yeah. Oh, Icon's pointing out that ticks tend to move early when they spawn an opponent. When you, if you don't turn off unit A or don't turn off, or don't put them to hold position. Yeah, that should be the default setting. Yeah, I don't know why it isn't. I think in my case I set it to be, but yeah, that that generally should be. That's an odd thing to have. And Skazi right now, Skazi and Sino, mm. line to line. Sniper, watch it. And Sino is going to be able to break through Skazi's force. Going to the south with a nice, very powerful Thug Law Ball and some bandits as well, just to get rid of the glaze head on. But the Thug Law Ball over to the south will just tear them to shreds. Skazi being forced back, the south being destroyed, the north having also been destroyed oh, by the Firewalkers. Tick, and tick, tick. The tick, no, well, that's not that great. The tick doesn't really do much. The bandits get knocked out, but what does it matter? It's yeah, commander. level five commander. No, level four. Yeah, level four commander, but still. Skazi's commander taking a lot of damage. Disarmed. And yeah, one more disarm shot should do it. Two more disarm shots. It's got lost some of the disarm power, but still. Now, a couple more disarm shots will do the trick. There we go. Gets disarmed and this point, yes, yeah, seven seconds worth of being disarmed. It's, it is locked down, and Scuzzy and Orphelius throwing the towel. Wow, they yeah, got. That's what it is. They got G turned around. And this did not. That scuttle made them too scared to move forward. And that commander investment. If Scuzzy had not commanded, made that much of a commander investment, invested much more into vehicles. Can you imagine 3,000 metal in scorchers okay, being in at the tech in the, uh, in the north? <laughs> yeah, that's, I was getting distracted because there was all those wasted scorchers. And the fact that Skazi's commander was buffed to high heaven and never used for fear of being destroyed <laughs> by Scuttle. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a great way to win. Like, psychological tactics won the day in this game. That really is what it was. Okay, so we're going to have another match. I'm not sure what map's going to be on. It's up to Orphelius and Skazi. I don't know. These guys, these people might pick some pretty unusual maps. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. But I also wouldn't be surprised if they pick Red Comet, so we'll see. No idea what they have in mind. Okay, so at this point we are at game two of the semifinals. Well, second semifinals. After this, it will be finals. We're not going to do bronze match. Norm616 went to bed. <laughs> Norm is currently asleep, and Reimark will not play alone. So we are going yeah. to be going straight to finals after this match. Whoever wins this, <coughs> we'll be fighting Anarchid and Yurga for the top spot. Sesame Street finished long ago. So it's bedtime. Yeah, well, it's... <laughs> I mean, for Norm, it's 6.30 a.m. Or 6 a.m. when we went to bed. I'm not surprised. I, I really cannot blame them. And we're actually going to be in of course Forest, not. which is not a map that has popped up in these tournaments very often, but it is a map that I've seen a few times before, and I've shown in some of my analysis. Actually, I think my first analysis cast was on this one. I think it's a very nice map. Yeah. It, one of the... It leaves a lot of opportunities, lots of routes, lots of strategies, lots of factories, everything works. Yeah, it's surprising, like actually, because <coughs> because like this map, for its size and for its shape, you'd expect to be just a pure vehicle map, but it works quite well for cloaky bots. And even kind of for shield bots. You have to you have to predict a bit more if you're going for a cloaky bot. You can't just go in guns blazing, just attack in any direction and expect it'll work. But you still have a decent amount of flexibility, and as long as you're keeping an eye on what your opponent is doing, as long as you're being fairly intelligent about where you place your forces, Cloakybot Factory works fine. Shieldbot Factory works fine. And then, of course, vehicles have a slightly better advantage because it is flat and it is fairly large, but the advantage isn't that pronounced compared to bots. But grats to Moj and Sino. That was a good game. Yeah, that they pulled that. They pulled that out. That was well done. <coughs> I was anticipating Anarchid versus Skazi uh, finals. Well, yeah, they, that Skazi and Ophelia are the second seed. They are definitely the favorite to get to the finals. In Motion Zeno aren't particularly well known, and their elo is lower. 
But at this point, Skazi and Orphelius are one down. They they need to push this hard. Yeah. So the Racketeers they... play a major role in this tournament. I've seen them, I think, in every game now, apart from the water game. Yeah, pretty much. Actually, other than the Anakin Yurga Auto War Parzival game, and that actually might have helped a bit for Auto War and Parzival. But otherwise, yeah, Racketeers are showing their power in this tournament. And there we go. We are getting to the game, I think. I'm not sure. Pulling start and someone's trying to get into play for some silly reason. It's not they're not in the tournament. I don't know what what's going on. <coughs> anyway, We are going to be moving on to game two. It has just started up. I have horses being loaded, and we can now show it up in a bit more detail for those of you who aren't quite so familiar with the map. So this map is, like I said, fairly large. This is the map. It's taller than it is wide by a small margin. It's like 12 by 14. You have three start spots, roughly. You have these th three medals here, three medals here. This is a less popular star plot. Usually center and right, or center and left, the south, maybe center and west. From here, the center is fairly powerful. It's, it's often you kind of see a lot of defense crawl going on, but usually players will try to pick one of these sides. Like the south side will go for the west, the north side will go for the east, and this little cavern area here, and just try to take that. And after that, it's usually basically a crawl trying to get different areas. You'll often see harassment forces going around the sides, dealing with these metal extractors over here. Oftentimes these ones here over in the southeast center and over in the northeast center, those are usually poorly defended. So raiders can usually get rid of those as well as the far southeast and far northwest. Those are also often very poorly defended and therefore complete raider fodder. So see, Maj going for an air start, which is not surprising, though a little bit against what we've heard. It doesn't quite demonstrate what we were talking about before, how this will work for the surprising factories. Air factory being more typical. But we do see that Sino is going for a shield bot factory. And a shield bot factory, of course, is a bot factory. On a map like this, you wouldn't expect that to work quite so well, but it does, or it generally will. And on the other hand, in the north, Skazi and Orphelia is not quite setting themselves up. Orphelius is going for Shieldbot as well to the northwest. Skazi, Skazi has not shown where they're playing. Probably going to go north center. Yeah. It's the most obvious. Although northwest is just, like I said, that's unusual. But I don't really blame it. I think that's not, a, like I said, that's poorly defended. So doing that might throw your opponent off. Because they're thinking, oh, the northwest is going to be poorly defended. Well, no, it's actually going to be a main base. The northeast is going to be the one that might be poorly defended. But maybe not. It's a bit, it's a bit more compact. It's a bit easier to put one or two yep. lotuses and just defend the entire thing. So I'm not sure what Mosh is doing. There's a, I think he's off with his... Uh, oh, yeah, Mosh's star location got messed up. Okay, whatever. They they have their build all set up again, so they're good. Oh, okay, there we go. So air factory so them, and tanks, heavy tanks. Shields, aircrafts, and shields. This is a very unusual start. Well, that air start might just win them the game. Okay, the air start's not that unusual. Remember yeah. all the previous two v two tournaments where players didn't take an air. Actually yeah, it. this is the second air game, air start game that I've seen in the tournament. I think possibly the third that's been in the tournament. I'm not sure what the start was in that games in the games between Mostino and Icon's Killer, but I noticed the second game there was a gunship plant. I think that was a gunship start. So air and gunship start is something that has been happening a bit, but not as much as people seem to think. Like there's this kind of a meme that you always do air start in team games, but in these two v two tournament games, it doesn't come up as often as you'd expect, given that. Uh, now, exactly. Sino, Sino going for <coughs> dirtbag scout. Pretty typical. Gonna encounter the Kodachi, and well, after that, 
Well, they know about the heavy tanks, but they already knew about the heavy tanks. That's been scouted out completely. Uh, immediately a second air factory is being built, not blocked, by Ophelius. Yeah, Ophelius is going for an immediate air switch, figuring that they pretty much have to do so in order to stay in the game, because, well, they're not wrong. The Swifts are going to take air control, and any later air switch would basically be suicide. And the Swifts, of course, can harass out pretty effectively. They just got rid of the Kodachi for one thing. That Kodachi there, like that, that Scott's Kodachi killed for Will that convict free. live? Hmm? No, the constructor dies. It burns to its death. It got set so. on fire while it was being constructed. So. However, <laughs> this Orphelius does get spotted out. See, well, Moj more so. Moj does see what's happening. Sees exactly what's happening. Sees the Swiss being built. Or not the Swiss yet, but sees the air factory being built, and probably Swiss will follow once we see what the queue is. Orphelius has not actually set a queue for that yet. Yeah, the solar collectors take a lot of the fire from the Swift. I didn't I didn't know that that was possible. Well, that's the solar collectors are for. They're walls. No, but the Swift sh shoots from above. <laughs> that's true, but Swift, they tend to attack from a fairly low angle when they hit the ground. Like they tend to swoop oh, down quite low. Me? Am I blowing in my mic? Yes, you are. That was not my intention. But yeah, swoop. Uh, sorry, <laughs> not swoops. Swifts. They swoop down fairly low when they attack, so hitting those walls of solar collectors is not surprising. And yes, there are Swifts being built up by Ophelia. That's exactly what they're going for, which makes perfect sense. While Moj, on the other hand, confident in their air power, has gone for Raven. And at this point, they have three Ravens, one of which appears to be moving forward. Or not. No, never mind. Swifts are moving forward. Where's the third Raven? Oh, I see. Two are up, one's in production. Two of them are moving forward along with some dirtbags from Sinnoh, just to see what's going on. And dirtbags blocking out these walls makes absolutely sure that all the choke points are accounted for. Very smart move, Shino, just to know exactly what's going on. Know exactly when, where Orphelius and Skazi move, or at least the first time they do. Mm. And know what paths they have taken. Yeah, I think it's a bit of an overkill on dirt bags. Yeah, they probably they could have done that with about half as many dirt bags. They're not really blocking anything, and well, actually, well, no, they couldn't have done with half, half as many dirt bags. Dirt bag line of sight is very small, so that's actually pretty much the minimum number of dirt bags that'd be necessary. Maybe, maybe one less. And uh, here's the problem out. with uh, not having. Uh, not having uh, what? Now we need to uh, look at the air game. Who can? Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's going to be a little bit tricky. Will be the most important in the coming next, upcoming next phase. But anyway, Anuk is pointing out that the way the dirtbags are positioned actually makes the terrain that much harder. Like, it's the worst possible position for the terrain when they die. That's uh, a good point. Actually, no, I hadn't thought about that one. Although I'm not sure if that necessarily maximizes it. I would think that having it completely filled in would maximize terrain ruining, but... I'm not the biggest shield bot player. I'm more of a cloaky bot main myself. Mm hmm. Anyway, Sino is going over, once again, setting up that choke point. And we don't. We have round two in the air fight. Maj does not look in a good position. Ophelia said all their Swiss in position at the right time in the right place. Maj did not. And Maj has to be careful with these Ravens. They are trying to avoid having them die. Ophelia is really There's playing on the air around. domination now. I think it's a good good call. It really is, especially in a map this large. Especially this attack with uh, so much into it. Skaz is wasting his Panthers on Ravens, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's going to kill them both pretty quick. And this was coming in to follow up to finish that off. Down goes one Panther and the second Panther getting stunned <laughs> out by his fallen brethren. And it itself goes down. Complete waste of Panther, yeah, as you said. that's the downside of maps like these. If they're big and you have air, then your best defense is air. Yeah. This isn't really on the edge of where that's viable, though. Like, this is still a map thing that's small enough that you yeah. could defend against air with ground pretty effectively. Yes. It's certainly not that big. I mean, I, I could see that being a thing. I could see that being totally viable. An outlaw being pointed out. Oh, I see. Outlaw, yeah. Outlaw would kill Orphelius with... Yeah, with all the Swiss going around getting slowed down. That's actually a good point. But there aren't any follow-up forces around the Outlaw, so right now it's not really 
that much of a threat. I don't think Ophelia is going to worry about that too much. I think they're going to worry more about dealing with these other Swifts. And at this point, Mudge has gotten their numbers back up. And the Raven's being used to try to get rid of... <clears throat> a few units here and there. Trying to get rid of a Panther. Very smart move there. Get rid of the Panther. And at this point, Mudge doesn't have air control quite yet. They're getting close. <laughs> it's funny that Sinio has neglected the lower right corner. Yeah, well, that's... It's easy pickup. <laughs> yeah, that is 8 metal. Actually, that's 10 metal right there. So plus 10 that they could be taking, and they haven't. A little surprising they're actually pretty even in economy. I think there might be some reclaim or overdrive going on that's making up for the lack of metal extractors. Not sure how sustainable that is. And it is reclaim, in fact. Not sure how sustainable that is, though. And Moj, however, does appear to have that reclaim working for them. But even then, it's still... Actually... Wow, that's a lot of... That's plus 54% overdrive. One and a half times overdrive for Moj. Nicely done. Yeah. Moj and Sino are really winning the game now. They do have a bigger income. Bigger Air Force. And chat pointing uh, out Again, Stasi is way too passive. Yeah, Anakin pointing out in chat that... Reaper and Banisher is not going to work too well. The map's kind of small, and the dirt packs have really messed up the terrain, so their movement is going to be very much hampered. Yep. And everyone's accessing, by the way. Absolutely everybody is accessing. <laughs> Especially a big deal. Has has everyone has smacked into the plus 20 hump? In fact, Shino's the only one that hasn't really smacked into it. Everyone else has smacked clean into the plus 20 hump. Actually, slightly over plus 20, but yeah, it's like, that's... Really, really at this stage, at this level of play, we're we're seeing the plus 20 hump. I'm kind of surprised. Happens to all of us. Yeah, I guess it does. Just surprising it happening to everyone at once. <laughs> I can see, you know, it happens to each of us once in a while, but it happens to all of us uh, at the geez. same time in the same game is, I think it's more of the map, the way the map is laid out, and the fact that the map's, it is plus 2.23, not plus 2. That might be throwing a few people off, because it, the numbers are just a little off. It's like one extra every four mexes is like five. So it just it makes your count if you're counting by mexes, it makes your count just a little bit off. Your intuition is a little bit off. And the southeast has been taken. Yeah. I could point out the southeast did. has now been taken. So Shino and yeah. Moj. There are those juicy mexes in the center that cannot be taken by Skazi. Well, Orphelius might be able to. Oh yeah, Skazi can't really move any forces in past yeah, these now we got the terraform ropes blocks. Pushing forward. Mm. Yeah. I think the it was a brilliant move by Orphelius to build that second air factory. Or his a second factory as an air factory yeah, immediately. And two minutes into the game. That the timing was the thing that really made this work. Because now I mean Shino like, Moj would have had free reign. Like, Moj would have won five minutes ago. Were it not for Ophelia's going for that early air factory. That was a wise decision. And Ophelia's is now... Like, Ophelia's has stopped Moj from really doing as much as Moj. Like, Moj would have wanted to go for a bunch of mech snipes. Maybe go for a comm snipe. I mean, there was a lot of damage that Moj would have dealt. Yes. And Ophelia's has prevented that. It's just scared Moj into staying behind. Just, they don't want to lose their swifts. They don't want to lose their air army. So they're going to stay behind. They're going to be playing it safe. And that gives Ophelia's mm -hmm. and Skazi a lot more breathing room than they otherwise would have had. And even with it, there's still a lot of harassment going on, but a imagine little bit that. of <clears throat> mobile and the air would be nice, I think. Yeah, a few vandals or a f maybe. just uh, indeed, just a few, yeah, not it. just like three, four, about that. No. So you cannot do those uh, swift raids. So you always lose uh, one or a swift when you do that. Yeah, just to get that attrition, and so at that, at that point, Orpheus's army would get considerably larger. But that's not happening. Moj's army <coughs> is building up just fine. And these forces down here for Ophelia is getting whittled down just a bit here and there. Swift's coming in, dealing some damage. Raven's coming in, killing a few, like one or two every run. And there's another couple. <laughs> Although Banisher... Yeah. Banisher, the, best AA. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Banisher's coming in here. Getting past the wall, well, the, not quite wall, getting past the terraform and just tearing apart every raven. And a jump on switch. 
Moe's going for a jump bot, proxy jump bot, with Scuttle as their primary focus, apparently. Scuttle and Firewalker. While Scuzzy has gone for a clickbot factory into a lot of size, proxy in the, in the northeast side. Yeah, this might actually work. I there are how many so. Swifts? Nine. Well, there's nine for Aphelios and about... Yeah, nine for each player. Nine for Moj and nine for Aphelios. But Moj has a couple of Hawks as well, and some Phoenixes and some Ravens. So if Moj can get air control, they have a lot of follow-up options. At this point, Aphelios has no follow-up options in the air. Their follow-up is entirely on the ground. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see, energy-wise... Skazi has made fusions. Oh, Skazi, look, Moj, on the west side of the map, there's a scuttle, and it's trying to go to Aphelios' commander. And that is a... Well, that's something I gotta keep an eye on. <laughs> Doesn't have any yeah, really easy but... path, though. Like, he's trying to get past the defenders, trying to get in. I don't know if it's gonna be just a very do, expensive though. scout. <laughs> At this point, yes. If those, with those defenders in place, that's all it can really do. And... Oh! It goes it for missed. it and doesn't make it. Oh, the Firewalker is following right after, and that, that like, I don't know why they didn't wait, because the Firewalker would get rid of the defenders, and then, were, then after that point, the Scuttle would have been able to get in for free. He lost one of the Banishers in this attack to mm. the uh, Ravens. And the other one's pretty heavily damaged, too. And the Swiss taking a lot of damage, and there are Razors up for Shino. But at this point, territory is slowly but surely being pushed to Team Red's favor. Yeah. And they're just, they're crawling Scott, forward. I think it's a matter of time before Skazi's economy will uh, really start to make a big difference. Yeah, especially with the heavy tanks. They're getting banishers, they're going to get reapers pretty soon, probably. Well, no, they're going to probably stick to banishers, but still, they're going to get a lot of units. He has more energy than all the other players combined. <laughs> yeah. That's, that is a big deal. But the overdrive of... Um, Sino is a lot better. He placed those pylons. Skazi is skipping on those. Yeah, but and he didn't connect uh, his uh, fusion. But at this point, it's kind of a question of Skazi and Ophelius being able to get through uh, Moj. Sino Sino's does force. tries an attack. Uh, Ooh, actually, that's nice by Moj. Burning up all of Ophelius' incoming forces. It's a lot of damage dealt. And quite a few Swifts going down as well. Orphelius is losing large chunks of their army basically for free. Ah, uh, the Swift can take out the, uh, the Geothermal now. Where? Oh. Oh. There are a lot of Swift uh, Scythes on the left side as well. Yeah, that and Scythe is going I think they might con want to consider some uh, Static Anti-Air now. Well, there are some gremlins. There have been gremlins being built up, like Skazi built a few gremlins, and then Orphelius has had some vandals, I think, has some racketeers. And of course, there's the banishers. But yeah, surprisingly, no archangels or anything. Nothing that you'd really expect given the factory choices. Yeah. Overdrive has kicked in. Skazi's running 48 metal. Oh, wow. Okay. That's. That is going to be very scary. Very shortly. If Scots is running on the metal, they need to get a solid tank factory going. <laughs> <laughs> so much pork, so many many turrets by Sino. Another scuttle being built up, Moj's favorite. And Rymark screaming at Moj to build sumos. Which I kind of disagree with at this point. I think the pyros aren't a bad idea. I think the firewalk is not a bad idea. And if uh, Skazi hits yeah. both sides sides with Sifts at the same time, I think they can tear down the Maxis and the Fusions or the Geothermal before all the Swifts can take down the Sifts. Yeah. Oh, wow. Which Four they will going do eventually. The northwest. Or, sorry, this the might also be a good idea for Rafelius to build up some bombers to attack when the Swifts will be attacking the Sifts. Hmm. Yeah, and Skazi just scouting out all the good spots to attack with. Trying to figure out where he they wants can all his the he's, he's gathering the them. Here. Yeah, but I think one. Oh, they're waiting for a Moho Geothermal. From the looks of it. Uh, yeah. 
That is going to be painful. Although there's still the fusion plant they can take out. There's the air factor they can take out. They can take out a lot of stuff. Ah, uh, that's a little raid with uh, bandits. Yeah, it didn't do much, but uh, Sai's coming in. Sai's getting revealed by the fusion reactor. But hey, why not kill the fusion reactor when you get a chance? Ah, uh, exactly. So, fusion reactor dead. Geothermal plant threatened, and it's gonna be just killed. Not even gonna wait, just gonna go for it, losing size in the process. All but oh, one size goes down. <laughs> they kill it faster than the Skazi anticipated. Yeah. Do you see the scout is gremlin? Oh yeah, that, that gremlin scout. That's that's an anarchist <laughs> thing that I'm glad other people are taking. I've I've been doing it myself as well, but that's something that Anarch is the only person who really does it on a consistent basis. Yeah, and shield ball. Or Felix feels good about it. That is quite the shield ball, all right. You can't even tell that's yellow. There's so much blue there, just canceling out the yellow and making it all white. <laughs> that's how ah, much shield Kelsey, there is on, in that ball. Down, uh, I think it's time for singles. singularities. <laughs> you know, you might have a point. Especially in Skazi's case. <laughs> but at this point, it's like 20,000 army each side. It's actually still pretty even. Army value-wise, at least. And there's the sumo. Rymark, you needn't whine anymore. There is a sumo. Okay, I shouldn't say whine, but... Rymark, you don't need to scream at Moj anymore. The sumo is being built. Don't you worry. And that firewalker is actually doing a really nice job. It's been pushing this area back over the west side. East side's still been pretty much a stalemate, but the west side... That Firewalker is really keep giving Orphelius some pause. Not a whole lot of pause, but some pause. <laughs> Just some. Just some. It's a small amount. But with that sumo coming in, that's actually not terrible. Especially with the additional shots coming in, the Firewalker getting their f shots in, dealing with the shields pretty effectively. And at this oh point, boy. That sumo gonna is going to drop. It's going to go for it. Is that that stomp? Is it going to happen? Come on. Nope. Give it the stomp. Give the audience what they want. And we have stomp. And a wonderful <laughs> oh, stomp that ah! was. Over half the thugs go down to that stomp. I don't think so a better obvious. stomp could have been made. <laughs> and all these hawks. A dozen no, hawks. Didn't it? I think Orphelius is going to lose air control pretty shortly. Orphelius. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, there's Vandals around, there's a bunch of Swifts, there's a lot of Hawks. And Ophelius doesn't even have that many Swifts yet. I mean, Ophelius has stopped building Swifts uh -oh. after about 10. Super Bowl. And another Sumo coming in. The first one's still alive. Needs repairs, though. Oh, burning up all of the convicts. Baiting out the, si baiting out the Swifts. Getting rid of all the Swifts as well. Try to take air control, and Orphelius has now pretty much secured air control. Yes. Orphelius has no air control left. Moj, now we're gonna see what Moj wanted to do in the first place before they lost, or before they were contesting air control with Orphelius. Now that they have gained air control. Can he kill the sumo? He can. Yeah, that sumo needed to be repaired. Why was that sumo not repaired? No, and the firewalker as well. That's. I oh, see, the firewalker's way out yeah. of this. Or wait, out uh, of One way. I should say. He loses a lot of his AA fighters now. And Dude, uh, Moj! No! Moj's commander goes down as well. Not that it matters hugely at this stage in the game, but it's still something you don't want to have happen. Because there's really no reason for it to happen. Now the big shield ball is doing a counterattack in the center. And that's one big god mother wow. of shield balls. That, that, is the, that is the canonical shield ball, of which all of the shield balls are merely a subset. <laughs> They're merely a shadow of that. However, at the same time, but we have still, a Reaper still Ball. To, do you see those Reapers? Yeah, the Skazi Reaper Ball. Like five Reapers. There's a Strider Nobody. worth of Reaper. Two Striders worth of Reapers. Right here. That's 13 uh, Banishers. <laughs> yep. 13 Banishers and about half a dozen Reapers. All total 15,000 metal. That could have been a Bantha. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'd have to double check that one actually, but I'm pretty sure it would have been. And an okay Thunderbird shot there doesn't quite do what it needs to do. 
I think it was this also it. calls for the missile silo. Yes, it does. But I don't. I don't think either player is going to build that. I think they're much more focused on the mobile units. So I think Shino's trying to just get rid of all these tanks. Try if they can kill all the tanks, then they have free reign. They don't lose their shields in the process. They have free reign, and they pretty much won the game. But that's a decently sized if. Especially since the west side has been opened up once again, Orphelius has that oh, under their control. Monscazi. The jump bot factory is down. The are nice, but they're not the salt units. Yeah, that. Especially against shields, that's not going to help. Those banishers can't do much at all, and the felons, despite draining all the shields to get rid of them, yeah. banishers still go down quickly enough, and Scazi losing a lot of their army. Shino, on the other hand, not so much, and Moj, while maintaining The second attack on the left is. Working out kind of okay. -ish. No, he needs it's to spend falling. a lot of his uh, fighters, his air on uh, that felon. Yeah, but at this point, that attack is over. Orphelius can't do too much. Skazi just lost all of their heavy tanks, or is in the process of losing their heavy tanks. But look at the income. That's true. Skazi does have a much larger income and is able to easily rebuild from here. But still, and also the scythe was, oh, it was spotted, it was destroyed, it didn't deal any damage. Overall, Shino and Moj are still at an advantageous position. Skazi... Skazi's pretty much the only hope. Orphelius doesn't have much at this point. And even Skazi is still losing a lot of units to the shield balls. Yeah. Their army value is dropping massively. One of those should... Thunderbirds would be nice now. <laughs> yeah, the Thunderbird would seal it. That would completely finish it off. And the pillager's doing a nice job clearing this out. But the Thunderbird does go down. Thunderbird doesn't deal any But the shields whatsoever. are down, and now the, uh, the artillery units are actually hitting something. Yeah, and they're all clumped up as well. But the dirtbag is coming in to try to get in the way, try to just and spoof everything. But that's not doing a good enough job. And Shino losing most of their shield ball. Giving Skazi the room they need to continue pushing forward. And Shino, wow, they lost a lot. They went from like 14,000 to 5,000. Yes. 5, they just lost everything. I think Skazi and Ophelia is going to push game three now. That that turned around. Yes, it was a very straightforward tactic. Just keep hitting that shield bull until the shields are out and then kill it. Yeah. So we're going to be seeing game three pretty shortly, I think. Unless unless Motion Zeno can pull out something, but it's not likely. They haven't really got a whole lot of stuff to pull out with. Shino in particular, there's a lot they have to rebuild in order to get back into this. And Skazi is way ahead. Skazi has more military than everybody combined at this point, by cost. <laughs> yep. He also has more metal than... No, he does not have more metal than everybody combined. <laughs> no, actually, they do. Does they do just barely have more. Actually, no, not quite. Just a little bit less than everybody combined. More than the enemy team combined. Yeah, they're really... Yeah, more fusions. Of. I agree. I think this is... Is this gonna be it? Well, Moe's going for a few last ditch attempts. They still have air control, they still have a lot of damage they can deal as a result of that. Although they burned up most of their dirt bags, which... May have been what they were going for in order to block off terrain, I'm not totally sure. Glaive spam! That would be nice. Yeah, Glaive spam would be a difference. But Skazi not going for Glaive spam. Or Bandits on the left side. Skazi going for Conjurer spam. And neither Ophelius nor Shino are going for heavy... And Shino's going for heavy, heavy Convict. If they really want to take that center back, want to reclaim the entire <laughs> thing. It's nice to see these Phoenixes used. Yeah, I they think the Phoenixes were... No, they weren't buffed. They weren't really changed at all, actually. They just got slightly more popular for some reason. People understood yeah, what Phoenixes did. The Phoenixes were actually useful units. Yeah, this is probably going to be about five minutes to make it to end game from here. It's commander versus turrets. <laughs> what kind of turret? <laughs> laser turrets. Actually, the commander should win in that case. <laughs> he did, and now he's making a laser turret on the uh, geothermal. Oh yeah, there it is. <clears throat> Setting up that Lotus right next to the geothermal plant. 
you know what? Wow, Chino's, I mean, sorry, Moj is really pushing now. They're really trying to make sure that they have dealt as much damage as they possibly can. But still, they're just not killing things fast enough. I think the problem is that Moj is focusing very much on the center. They're focusing on the military, and it's not bad. It's not bad to focus on it, but given how quickly Skazi is rebuilding everything, killing the caretakers would be a better option. Like going north and just nailing <laughs> the caretakers, that would probably be a much better option. I mean, they'd have to then get rid of those tanks. Like that would still be a problem. But no, I don't think they can handle this. No, it's too late now. They would have had to do it a couple minutes ago, like two or three minutes ago when they first got air control back, and it's just. Not Yay, Tremor! <laughs> oh? Well, I don't see a Tremor, but I do see a lot of... Oh, has I made see, a yeah. Tremor. Yeah, it's right in their main base. It hasn't been used yet. But the Reapers are... The Reapers are finishing it. This is game. I know they might be aware of Scuzzy and Ophelius' economy, but they're probably guessing that it's really good. Just given that... Reapers have died, and then new ones have taken, like, every Reaper that's died, two have taken their place. That screams, the economy is awesome. Which it is. <laughs> I mean, these Reapers are coming in, the the Reapers are being built like blaves. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. In fact, it takes only, okay, that's, yeah, it would take only about 15 seconds to build a Reaper. So not quite like blaves, but still... Really darn quick regardless. I guess more like warriors, but yeah, really quick. Machino's commander about to go down. Caretaker's about to go down as well. And yeah, a couple caretakers go down to that commander explosion. And that's basically game. Oh, if this, if this Benedict can get one shot on those convicts. <laughs> Just, oh, that's a nice tactic. Yeah. Another kill for, oh wow, that's... There's not much to be said there. That's just kind of how the game goes. So we are going to move on into game three. There we go. Less than five minutes. Only three minutes. Yeah, we're moving on to game three, which will be Mojensino's map choice. Oh, the Moho Geothermal Plant. Actually managed to get that built up. Good for them. So we'll be going to that in about... In just a couple minutes, I'm going to get some water and a little bit something to eat. So I'll be back in a couple minutes. Short mission. Stay tuned, guys. Okay, welcome back, 0K fans. This is Shadow 3 with Loris the 14th. Once again, we have the Game 3 of Scazio Ophelius versus Mojensino. First game was Mojensino winning it. Taking it back, actually, from Scazio Ophelius on Altair.